What's up guys? In this video, we're going to talk about debt and debt as it correlates to what crypto is trying to do at the moment here in 2022. So the first part of this video and the main part is really going to be talking about more about the debt based monetary system. You know, maybe some viewers of this channel, uh, I would like to know what, where you guys are at on this. Maybe uh, most folks do understand how the Federal Reserve and all this stuff works and have a good idea of it. I feel like most folks in crypto kind of get it. Uh, but what I wanted to talk about here is I've been fascinated with the concept of debt because, you know, it's a two sided thing. And I think there's a hidden third side that I just want to get into. And the reason I wanted to bring this up is because of stuff that's happening in my personal life, as well as what I'm seeing happen in the crypto space, which to me is not the direction that I, at least I envisioned when I got into it in the first place. So I feel like it's going in the opposite direction and I just wanted to talk through some of this stuff. So before we get into this, we're going to be getting into some quotes that are controversial, uh, stuff from the Bible. I'm not religious particularly. Um, I do generally subscribe to what's in the Bible. Everyone's got their own opinion on that and that's going to be respected. I'm just using these source quotes to uh, back what I'm gonna talk about in this video. I'm not telling folks to go read the Bible or go to church. I'm not, we're not getting any of that stuff. I'm just using some of the stuff that's in here because I do believe it is a good source of morality. This is just my opinion, right? Okay, so very first one here. So I'll, I'll put all these links in the description. Um, Rich ruleth over the poor and the borrower is servant to the lender. AKA, if you're in debt, you're a slave. Frankly, that's what it is, right? Because mortgage, you get them, what are we told when we go into school, right? Um, all throughout from five to the 18th, we're told go to school for 13, 12 years, go to college, get a student loan, you go to go to some fancy school, go to the best school you can. If you have to get a loan, thousands of dollars, tens of thousands of dollars for four years, get out, get a job because you're in debt already. You haven't made any money, get a job. Uh, when you can, when you can show, show, some, show some income, get a mortgage for 30 years, work until you're 55, 65, and then you're free. Um, you know, ironically, you know, with all the stuff going on in America and with our, about race and stuff, <laughs> that that is indentured servitude, right? I mean, that's how it was. You know, back, back in, in the slave days, you had this concept called indentured servitude which was, it was for, you know, the half people, the half um, uh, black folks, right? And, you know, maybe some some full black folks got this benefit. It was like the top slaves, if you will. And we're getting into some, some racy stuff here. So if you, if you guys are uncomfortable, that's fine. But this is just something I want to talk about because I think it's interesting. Um, you are allowed to work in the house. This is where that whole meme came from for seven to 10 years. And then once you got done, the slave owner let you go and then you could be free, right? And what's the difference, right? Because by getting all this debt, the, most people agree that time is money, right? So not only do you have to pay the principal of the loan back, but you have to pay it back with interest, which, you know, that's what this whole usury thing, allegedly, that's what interest used to mean was usury. And I guess, you know, they double speak uh, that out of existence because, you know, that sounds, usury just sounds bad, right? I mean, Interest doesn't sound interest, you know, that people think, oh, that's interesting. But um, usually most people would hear that word even if they don't know what it means and think, oh, well, someone's getting used, right? Um, so you have to pay it back with interest over a long period of time. So that not only is it a claim on your future money, it's also a claim on your future time because time equals money if, if people believe that. So, I mean, that's what it is. And I'm not saying it's wrong. Let's, let's let that out there. I'm not saying debt is wrong. I'm just saying that that's, that's what it is, right? That I'm not going to call everyone that goes into debt a slave. I mean, but I'm not going to say that because that's a controversial thing. But, you know, that's what the Bible says. Is it right or wrong? I don't know. There's two sides to debt. And, and I, I really think there's three. And that's what I want to talk about here. Okay. So um, it then talks about the uh, money supply. So I think most people know this quote right here. Let me issue and control a nation's money. I care not who writes its laws. Basically saying that the central bankers with the ability to inflate any currency arbitrarily 
can basically do whatever the hell they want. And we this is this is ubiquitous now in the markets today. Not just crypto, all of them. Everyone knows, I mean it at least po people that are trying to make money understand this. I've mentioned this before on my channel. I'm seeing random channels and collectibles, just other areas of finance. Everyone before, I would say before 2020, I didn't see this. I didn't see random people talking about inflation and understanding that the government is printing money absurd, uh, you know, to a crazy level. I didn't see that. Now I see it all the time. People understand this now. Inflation is, is everyone knows it, what's happening. And, you know, that, that whole theme, uh, meme of Jerome Powell with the money machine go burr. People know it. People people understand what's going on, that the currency is being devalued. And that's why everyone's looking for the unique upside, which, you know, attracted a lot of folks into the cryptocurrency like myself. Um, but this this is not this isn't stopping. And in fact, it's happening right now. You know, there's there's two situations I've mentioned. Uh, sorry, not that I mentioned. Everyone knows about the, the recent two situations in the world from 2020 to 2022. Somehow, um, stock market, it did crash 40% at the first situation, but it reached a pre-situation levels and way past that. And it's still above that here at two years later, which I don't know how that's, that doesn't make any sense to me. You should, you can't, you, it doesn't make any sense that a stock market reaches all-time highs during a, um, a a pandemic. I mean, that's just craziness. And now we have another situation which is used for justification for printing more money. And that's the goal, right? It's just, so with the, you know, they're trying to combat it with rising interest rates, but the interest rates are still negative in real terms. So again, you know, this this is going to continue. If, if you can bet on anything, we can bet money supply is going higher they're not going to stop printing money and that's how you, that's how they control the system is because to bring it back to the debt thing if you have to work if your mortgage is a thousand dollars and you're paying say five percent interest rate if you're paying that you got to pay all that back and more um because your 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 actions are predictable right uh because you have to you have a 30-year mortgage you have to work for 30 years to pay that off unless you get decoupled upside, which is, um, that's gonna be the second phase of this video. Because you have to do that, it's very, you have to do it, right? You have to work and you're gonna get a linear increase in wages. But inflation devalues it such that either, it's either offset to more like a middling increase, like two or 3%, or it's uh, actually negative, right? Meaning that not only do you have to pay the principal back, but you also have to pay it with interest, but the value of the money you're getting is going like this. So what you have to pay back is like this, but the, what you're earning is this. Instead of, even though it gives the illusion to yourself that it's like this. And you know, let's, um, I wanna find, there's a Henry Ford quote that I'll, I'll link to that. Um, he basically says that if people understood the banking system, there would be a revolution tomorrow morning. And I, I think that's true, right? Because it's just, you know, <laughs> I, is it just really a surprise that oil hit, you know, $100 and uh, gas is $4 a gallon? And that, that's just here in the South. I, you know, and if you're on the West Coast, man, I, I don't even know what to say. But anyways, is it a surprise, right? I mean, to, to a lot of folks, it is. To some folks, it isn't. And, you know, now I think we can transition here to the second part of this video. All right, so... I'm not going to say the name here because I don't know if that's going to trigger anything, but this is just, this is a quote attributed to this individual. All right. Currency had the appearance of power, uses power to induce people into, sur here's the, here's the key right here, uh, surrendering their real wealth in exchange for the promise of greater wealth. Meaning that because people want to get ahead, they will put up their real assets, house, car, uh, education as collateral, basically to get something that they can't afford for the promise of greater wealth, right? Which, if you think about it, um, there's a way to deal with that. I mean, you know, I'm not saying people shouldn't be able to do it because everybody does it. And, you know, everyone's got their own risk tolerances. Everyone has their own desires, but there's a cost, right? And that cost, uh, the Bible actually says is blood. 
which is not wrong if you really think about it because it's life. You know, mortgage is synonym, synonymous for a, a term related to death, and that's not on accident. And if, if you, they can print money out of nothing, right? So they, when, when the bank gives a loan, they're basically creating money. The Federal Reserve only requires that commercial banks keep a very small percentage of their money on deposit at the bank. So whenever you get a loan, they're not actually giving you money that someone else has in a checking account. They're not doing that. They just write a plus on their ledger entry and issue it to you. And then they give you uh, in your balance and now it says a dollar amount. And now um, that money is in circulation. But when you have to pay it back, where do you get the money from? From your own production, from your own efforts, from your own blood, sweat and tears. So and that's that's the scam that I think Henry Ford is alluding to. And, you know, uh, people understand this. Some people don't. And the people that don't will continue to not understand it because that's how the masses are. It just is what it is. And, um, you know, that's where we're at. So there's more interesting stuff here. You could issue more notes that there's backing for. Issue them to public and private entities, entities, governments, and individuals. That goes back to I care not who writes the laws. Make money scarce. Tighten control. Collect collateral. So that's that whole thing of when he lied about the Napoleon, or he didn't lie, but he acted as if the Napoleon had won when he really did it. And they used that to buy up all the assets cheap. Um, this is very familiar. Folks watched my last video. You see all the equities prices are going down. When Corona uh, happened, uh, same thing, right? Um, all those people who kind of understood what was going on, they were able to buy it at the very cheap. And so what happens? The masses sell and they're willing to put up their real stuff up in exchange to get what they need need and that that uh leads to a massive wealth transfer and that's what happened in uh, 2020 that's what happened in 2008 into the 80s so on and so on and so on right and that's how it happens and you know i think uh related to this channel this should ring true to a lot of people you know, and I'm not saying, I don't know what's happening there, but that's definitely happening in the BSV space, right? Uh, because, you know, compared to the other cryptos, you know, maybe that's just the natural thing because it's just, you know, it's just not going to happen. But I just found that interesting. Okay. So that's where we're at. Um, and then, you know, the second situation here. That's what that's talking about. So collection of debts guaranteed by the economic aid and the enemy of the debtor. I mean, this stuff kind of makes sense when you start putting it all together, you know, and I, I know I'm bouncing around here, but um, that's where we're at. All right. Here's here's the one here. Now we go to the second part of this. All right. I like this quote a lot. The few who understand the system will either be so interested in its profits or be so dependent upon its favors that there will be no opposition from that class. All right. So we everyone knows about this part. That's that's what I've talked about before. Uh, it's very related to the Henry Ford court. But this part right here, I find is very interesting. So, and that's why I want to talk about the multiple sides of debt. So the, the ones who understand it, he basically, this guy is saying that the people that do get it because they're greedy will be so intoxicated by the profits that it brings that they won't fight it. They won't do anything to change it. And that's exactly what's happened in crypto. Um, you know, pumping coins, scamming the masses, um, you know, pumping, dump, running pumping dumps on the YouTube channel as an influencer, you know, doing all this crazy stuff on Twitter and YouTube and Twitch and Discord. And it's the same stuff, just different people. Right. And but there are individuals who do this and they spread the knowledge. Right. There's a lot of these finance guys I follow that I've been that I got into when I got into metals and Bitcoin. And I would put these individuals in that class, but they're not, they're not trying to scam people. They're just trying to educate. But the thing is, it's the same type of thing. And these are the same folks that would say that debt, someone that debt can be used as a tool for good, which I think it can, it can be used as leverage, right? That's, you know, you get a loan and you use that because you think you can get decoupled upside somewhere else, right? You take out a loan, say 50K at 5% because you got good credit. And you let's say you bet on some equity, right? Or a basket of some index funds. If that fund, just a very simple example here. If the fund rises eight to 
in that year, by the, and even before your five-year maturity of your loan stay ends, that's how you make a profit, right? Same concept with a business. That one's more sound, right? Because that's how things used to work is that when you go get a loan, you actually get money that was in the bank. That was, you know, that's was held on deposit. And the way the bank was supposed to make money <laughs> is they give the entrepreneur the loan at an interest rate, at a higher interest rate than what they pay the people who have deposits. That's how an honest banking system should work. But that's not <laughs> what's going on. They realized, hey, you know, you just, uh, where is it? Yeah, you can issue more notes and there's back and forth. So that's how it's supposed to work. But people are like, um, the bankers are like, oh no, 3%, 3% profits margins. That's not good enough. I need, I need 103%. Or I need 93%. Sound familiar? That's what's happening in crypto. Uh, 10, 10 X, 10 X in two weeks. I need a hundred X today. And that, I bought this, I bought eight coin. It needs to go up now. But yeah, so that's where we're at. So the folks that do get it, they they are educating and they provide uh, good content for their channels, influence, uh, teaching folks this, how the system works. But what this ends up is maybe they take out more debt and some will be successful, some won't. And they still are participants in the system. And I just found that interesting because it is just kind of like a, a self-fulfilling prophecy, right? It just means that nothing will change. And that's what I want to talk about with crypto, right? So uh, before I get into the crypto part, the last thing I want to say is I believe there's a third side, which is not participating. Um, I'll, I'll try to find another quote on it. I think it's from the Bible, but it's talking about do not be concerned with things of this world. And money is of this world. And a lot of the, everything in it are of this world, right? And when you don't have debt, you don't have to do anything. You know, you only have to do what you want. Now, that's that's also good and bad because that can lead to laziness. But instead of having to do something, you kind of choose what you want to do. And to me, that that's really what how life should be. This is just my opinion, right? I'm not trying to put this on anybody else. I'm just saying this is how I will be going forward in a very short amount of time. I won't have any debt. And I can do whatever I want, right? I won't have to answer anybody. I don't have to go to work nine to five. I've always been disgusted with that concept. Ever, I mean, for uh, eight year, eight years now, I've been, I've hated the idea because everybody's different. Every, not everybody works in that environment. And uh, ironically, the 2020 situation has made that very clear with this whole work from home thing. Um, I'll, I've always been able to work from home because of the travel that I've done. Uh, because when I'm not traveling, I don't have to go in the when I didn't travel, I didn't have to go in the office because I traveled so much. So I was very familiar with the work from home concept and I saw people who could do it and I saw people who couldn't. And that's how it should be, right? Some people can, some people can't. And those that's how those people should be managed appropriately. And it's the same concept, right? Not everybody should go into debt. Not everybody wants to be in debt. Some people do because they think they can leverage it. But there's consequences to that. And that's the first part of this video. So I think the third part is just not participating in the system. And I think that's interesting when compared against this part uh, of people, you know, because I would say that they kind of fall into it. They fall into the trap. Now, again, they might think, I don't want to call it a trap necessarily, but into the person who's saying this, I would say that he thinks it's a trap. I'm not, I don't believe it's a trap, but I think this person does. Because that's how the system continues, right? Because even the ones that get it, they they keep it going because they get they like the profits, they like the they get the dopamine, they like being successful in it, so they continue it. And then the third one is not participating, which leads to a middling life, right? So that's not perfect either. That means you can't get stuff that you can't afford, which you know maybe is the way that things were supposed to be, but you know who knows, right? Um, this is this is all very. Uh, now we're getting into some spiritual stuff, so I'll, I'll stop talking about that right there. But I hope that part made sense. Okay, so given all this stuff about debt, what was Bitcoin supposed to be, right? The title of the white paper is peer-to-peer -peer electronic cash, okay? Cash is an asset, right? If people hold cash on their balance sheet, that is a plus entry on the ledger, which means you have money, wealth, you can spend that down 
That's not debt, right? The U.S. dollar is a debt-based currency. Right? You know, what is it? 30 trillion at this point in debt that the government is in? Who's going to pay that back? They're not because you can't. You can't pay it back. and You're never going to pay it back. Who do they owe the money to? It's just money that's just been created. So when you have dollars, it's actually debt owed back to the Federal Reserve, right? And people just spend it out. And then the bankers can just contract by raising rates. Anyway, the point is, Bitcoin is supposed to be cash, right? And I'm not saying you shouldn't be able to take debt out against your cash, but I find it fascinating that Bitcoin does not behave any way like cash today. Neither does any other cryptocurrency. Um, it's a joke to compare any of them to cash. And here we go right here. Um, this just happened. <laughs> so let's just a uh, slight tangent here. On the same day last week, Craig Wright sued Coinbase claiming that BTC is not Bitcoin. Uh, Coinbase takes out the first big pack Bitcoin back loan from Goldman Sachs and Craig Wright gets banned from LinkedIn when he was uh, talking about a lot about Bitcoin's origins and what it was supposed to be. All that stuff happened in, within the span of like eight hours. Is it a coincidence? Probably, right? All right. Anyways, the largest exchange in the U.S. take out a loan from Goldman collateralizing Bitcoin. Okay. This, to me, this is full circle, right? So you have an asset. I don't even like calling it an asset, but it's an asset that has reached absurd valuations, right? And you have a company that is now publicly traded that, um, you know, is supposed to be a Bitcoin bank, so to speak. But here they are doing this deal. I don't know if this is marketing or they actually need the money. If they need the money, that's not good. But, you know, maybe this was just a show to say, hey, we can actually use this asset in the traditional financial system to take a loan out from it. Let me be very clear. I'm not saying that this concept is wrong. What I'm saying is this comes full circle to what's going on right now. The fact that Coinbase did this, it just shows really what this is all about. Goldman Sachs has 2.5 trillion assets under management. Interest rates are rising, right? If Coinbase is really strapped for cash, what is the interest rate on something like this? It's not disclosed, probably because it's high as fuck. Who knows, right? But you depress the asset prices. You uh, restrict liquidity into the assets. The prices come down. People get FOMO. They get out. Sorry, people don't get FOMO. They have fear. They sell, depressing the price further. The people who are manipulating understand what's going on. They buy up the assets at the bottom, and then they rake. They rake the people that they um, that they got the collateral from. In this case, Goldman Sachs. Uh, I'm gonna play a video here in a second. Coinbase, which was supposed to be something that competed with them, right? Um, they fall into the same trap. What's happening? Bitcoin's going down. It's 33K, right? All the cryptos are down. Uh, maybe they're strapped for cash. Oh, hey, here, we'll, we'll give you our Bitcoin's collateral. Um, Goldman Sachs, what is their interest rate at the Federal Reserve, right? What is their interest rate? Seriously, um, it's been zero for almost 14 years. It's close to zero. What is the interest rate on this loan? Right? I already talked about this. 15%, 20%, they're about to hose Coinbase. They're about to rake them over the coals. Now, I don't know, again, if this is a marketing thing, fine, let it be. But the fact that this is happening, man, and people are cheerleading this shit. <laughs> oh, here we go. <laughs> Did Coinbase borrow USD from Goldman? Yeah, dude. I mean, <laughs> this is just super funny, man. All right. So I think people, I'm, I'm, you know, I don't know if I explained that well, but I think people can kind of see this, this craziness. Coinbase total holdings. Yeah. Wow. They only have 4,000 BTC. Okay. Yeah. All right. Then we have this going on. Um, <laughs> 1.25 million loan NFTs is collateral. Again, man, interest rates are rising, right? Uh, let's see. Yeah, 7.5 interest rate, I think, yeah, over six months. So really, that's 15% per year, right? So I wasn't off that much. 1.25 million alone. I mean, the, how do you price any of these NFT stuff? It's so volatile. So the people, okay, so that's what I want to say, man. The folks at the top of crypto, because it's totally failed as cash, um, they, they've probably, they, the assets have risen in value, but the next thing they're looking for, the new thing now, because the market, the liquidity is drying up, is how do I get, how do I actually get 
money out of the asset. Because if the asset was spendable as money, you wouldn't be looking to do this, right? Some people would, right? Some people would want to use it. And that's more of the honest scenario I'll talk about where you have the businessman going to the bank. But in this, um, why not just sell it, right? How do you price this stuff or just use it, right? Bitcoin is supposed to be cash. NFTs should be liquid. They should be, but there's no market for it. It's drying up, right? So people are trying, they don't want to sell it. So they give it up. And if they, the thing is, if they can't pay it back, they got to give it up anyways. Same thing with the mortgage, same thing with the loans, uh, the car loans, right? Here we go again. 10% with a 30 day duration. All right, so that's what? One point, uh, sorry, 0.9% or something that you got to pay back. I don't know how much this was, but yeah, dude, I mean, that the folks now are so, back to this, so interested in its profits or dependent upon its favors that they are just totally catering to the old system. Again, I'm not saying debt shouldn't exist in the new Bitcoin system, right? Because you're going to have that. You're going to have governments issuing currency, maybe on top of the ledger. And, you know, maybe people put up the real coins up, but right. But that's a more sophisticated type of sophisticated, firm, hard system, right? And where everything's public. And the, these are happening on public ledgers. But, you know, some of these deals are clear as mud, right? This isn't on a public ledger, right? No one, they don't know. We don't know what the interest rate was. We don't know how much. I mean, frankly, Coinbase is a public company. So is Goldman Sachs, allegedly. All right. Um, let's get this um, video out here. So this guy, he's very good. Uh, Alessio Rastani. He, this guy got famous by saying this right here. So we're just going to play this. At your candor. However, it doesn't help the rest of us, does it? All the rest of the Eurozone. I would say this. Listen. I would say this to everybody, everybody who's watching this. This, this economic, economic crisis is like, is like a cancer. cancer. If you just wait and wait thinking this is going to go away, just like a cancer, it's going to grow and it's going to be too late. What I would say to everybody is get prepared. Uh, this is not a time right now to uh, wishful thinking the government is going to sort things out. The governments don't rule the world. Goldman Sachs rules the world. Goldman Sachs does not care about this rescue package, neither does the big funds. So actually, what I, I, I would actually tell people, I want to help people. Uh, people can make money from this. It isn't just traders. What they need to do is learn about how to, how to make money from a, a downward market. I think that quote basically sums up what I'm trying to say in this video. I mean, it's everything from this quote, right? Um, Goldman Sachs rules the world. Here they go with the, the, the company that was supposed to help the, the, the little man. Right. The, the guy in crypto that was supposed to not destroy the banks, but disrupt the traditional banking system. And, you know, we have the same thing just going back to it. I mean, they're so they're so eager to go back into that system because they want the promise of wealth and greed. Same old stuff. And, you know, nothing's nothing's changed. Same same different group of people at the top. That's that's what it's about. But it looks like they're not even they're they're just gonna cave in to the people at the top. They never even eclipse them. But they want to, but they're not gonna be able to do it as long as this type of stuff's going on. All right. I know I jumped around here, uh, but I think I hope this all these points made can be kind of a cohesive thing. Um, again, I'm not trying to tell folks how they live their lives. I'm just giving feedback and opinion based off what I've seen in my first 30 years, 31 years, and you know what I see happening going on. And I just I just find it so crazy that crypto is heading this, in this direction because it's just proof that it's so far away from what it was supposed to be at this point. I don't think that's going to be in the long run, but that's where we're at today. All right, guys, let me know feedback. I'll see you all in the next one. Bye.